something very special. You've been having seats in the presence of the Lord. We honor the Lord. We welcome even those who are watching by way of Facebook Live. Again, we are certainly appreciative of uh, just the presence of God that's in the building. We certainly praise God for Pastor Deer who have led us in worship. Uh, did she bring us in? Yes, sir. She kicked the door in this morning. The door was kicked down. And I'm telling you, I feel the presence of God. God is doing something amazing. And I'm certainly thankful. We certainly appreciate again what uh, God has been doing and what he is doing. We are certainly thankful for the word of the Lord that has been preached and taught. I'm going to basically culminate today uh, the message and the uh, series on honor. And we're going to basically close this out. And uh, never can exhaust any particular teaching, any particular message. But we're going to basically try to bring this to a close so that we can move into some things that God is speaking uh, and some things that I believe that he's doing even as we continue to progress into the rest of this year as well as this summer. So we're excited about that. If you have your Bibles, turn to Philippians chapter 2 this morning. We're going to go there. We certainly honor the woman of God in her absence, Apostle Catherine. We appreciate her. Save her here all time. So we praise God for her again. Uh, just really thankful for what he has uh, been doing in her life. So we're certainly uh, excited about uh, this last, just this last message, but it's not going to end. And I know you'll pick up the study and you will begin to continue to build, if you will, your study, your understanding, your comprehension, as well as your conviction around honor. And we've been talking about the culture of honor. And we know that culture basically encompasses everything. Everything that we do, everything that is done, literally goes to the culture that we create. The culture that we create literally is what we tolerate that becomes more and most powerful in, in the sense of our culture. So that's why when you do have standards and you have things that you're developing and things that you're doing, you have to make certain that you uh, not only uh, develop those things in writing and those things in your consciousness, but you also have to hold yourself and others accountable to the things that you literally put in place as it relates to your culture. Again, what you tolerate becomes your culture, not just what you write. Sometimes we write, we, we write our vision, we, uh, even you know, those of us in business, we have office policies and manuals, we have to put things together so that people will know how to govern themselves, so people will know how to conduct themselves, and also so we'll know how and we'll be able to hold people accountable. So you can't hold me accountable for something that I don't know and something that you have not made me aware of. But when you develop culture, culture is developed through what you tolerate more so than what you just simply write. So if you write it, you must you must hold yourself and everyone accountable to that. In other words, it's like any kind of rules, rules or, or regulations that are, are, are basically uh, not, if you will, uh, adhered to. And if you don't hold people to those standards and rules, rules without regulations, it breeds rebellion. Okay? It, it breeds confusion. And you have things in place, but you don't hold people accountable to it. People get confused. They're like, well, listen, you said that if, if this is this, then this is the consequence. But if there is no one holding anybody accountable, it creates chaos. Now, my point to that is, is that it is up to each individual in the kingdom of God. We must, we must understand that the culture of honor is something that we must develop a conviction for. We must learn, understand what honor is. And let me give you a good, again, working definition. I know you already have it and you basically have been, you know, taught and Apostle C has done an amazing job teaching on honor, of course. But I'm going to give you this definition once again for those who may or may not know or may not have been here when she uh, talked about this particular, if you will, uh, subject she started out teaching and talking about honor and she taught it in a way where it was very clear let me find it I'm working this technology here it is doing its own thing doing its own thing honor the word honor it literally means literally uh, uh, high regard high respect esteem high regard high respect Esteem is something that literally causes you when you have honor for someone or something or you are even honorable, you have a high regard, a high respect, a high value. 
When you think of respect, you think of value. You place value, you place respect on something or someone. And we talk about the culture of honor, we begin to teach and we talked about how you first must honor God. God is literally uh, to be honored. The scripture says, and we read it last week in Psalms, that he is due honor, it's due him. We are to honor him. So we should have high regard, high respect. In other words, we should value God in the highest way. We value God with our life. We value God with our worship. Your worship is, a, is, is an expression of honor. And when you worship, literally you're worshiping God, that means you're walking in obedience to God. So you can't really honor God if you're disobedient to God and his word. And so when you honor God, literally you're coming now into a place where everything that God establishes, everything that God has established, everything that he instructs, everything that he commands through his word and his ways, literally you value that to the point where you put that above your own self. Oh, that's really good. And so we also talk about how you honor leadership. And see, when you honor God, you honor everything that God has established. You honor authority. You honor authority. You honor leadership, etc. And, and remember, it doesn't even matter how you may feel in the context of sometimes people are not honorable, but they sit in honorable seats. And so sometimes you honor the seat, sometimes when you can't even honor the person. In the sense that if I honor the seat, I'm going to honor the person. But there are times when you realize that this is a lousy leader, a lousy person who's in authority, but I'm not going to become dishonorable because they are lousy. I'm going to continue to honor God who established all authority. All authority that is established is of God and because I'm honoring God. I'm walking in obedience to God. I'm walking in honor, respect to God and what he established. So therefore, I have the ability now through my own personal conviction of honor and my respect and regard for God and his word, I will not dishonor or disrespect someone in authority simply because I don't like their ways or the way they do things. And in some cases, and let's be honest, come on, we, we got to tell the truth, right? Because that's what we learn to do, right? We tell the truth. And sometimes we don't like people. Hello, don't lie to yourself. You don't like everybody. You'll stay delivered if you tell yourself the truth. I'm telling you, it's hard to stay delivered when you're lying to yourself. So, so, so when you honor, you have a high regard. You have a high regard. You have esteem. And so we learn to honor authority. And, and we also, and we'll culminate today, we, we're going to continue to just sort of talk about today how we honor each other. One of the things that's also problematic, you ever seen people, they'll honor authority, but they'll disrespect each other? Come on here. Just don't love your pastor. Love everybody. Woo. And when you're walking in, 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 in the honor and you're walking what I call the honor code and you're, and you're creating and you're developing and you're establishing a culture of honor, you help the whole house understand that everybody has value. Come on. Everybody has value. Now let me share this because this is my philosophy, my belief, and my conviction of value. I don't let no one put a price tag on me. I cover my own price tag. I come with my own price tag. You know, no, I don't need you to label or tag me or put a price. I know my value. I know who I am. I know who I am in God. So I don't need you to put a price tag on me. I just need you to understand that I do have value. And what I want you to understand is just don't try to subtract. Don't, be, don't try to discount me. Hello? And you have people who will try to discount you. They, they, they say you got too much value. No, no, no. I want to show you in the scripture. The Bible says that we are to esteem one another higher. Come on, you're not supposed to take value away. Come on, you're not supposed to size people up based on where they sit, what they do, what their title is. Everybody has value, and we basically esteem one another higher than ourselves. Now, keep in mind, if you up here, imagine where you're going to put me. Woo. And so if I'm up here, I'm putting you above me. So I'm not going to devalue you. I'm going to add and increase your value by esteeming you more highly than my own self. You got a fascination right here. 
And when you, when, you, when you build and create a culture of honor, you basically, one of the rewards, because we talked about this last week, another award, a reward, excuse me, of a culture of honor and being honorable is that when you are an honorable person, you solidify and you build strong, solid relationships. Yeah. Dishonorable people don't have, they, don't, they have terrible relational skills. It's hard to deal with dishonorable people because most people who are dishonorable, they basically are selfish. Just self-invested. Hello? You know, and we are in this generation today where, you know, if, if ain't nothing in it for me, I ain't in it. We're, we're in the ain't nothing in it for me generation. I ain't in it. Yeah, I know because you're real quiet right there. Because some of you scared to say amen. And you're like, yeah, I've said that. i said that. And there's nothing wrong with being poised. We're going to talk about, because we're going to talk about even this. Some we're going to deal with some things. Because I believe God's getting ready to give some of you assignments. And assignments bring focus. It brings a focus to a point where you don't even have time to notice distractions. Some of you are going to get so focused on your assignment that you ain't even going to pay attention to the people who are really hating on you because you're so focus. But there's something you must understand about the kingdom of God and the culture of the kingdom is that we are like Christ. We basically are the type of people that we are selfless people and we, we come to serve and to serve one another and to honor one another and to give ourselves. Can I tell you, even the way and how God designs and desires to bless you is with the purpose of you being a blessing. Come on, Abraham. I'm going to bless you so that you can be a blessing. That's why you got to get comfortable with the fact that God wants you blessed. He wants you blessed so you can be a blessing. You can't be what you're not. Woo. You can talk like you're blessed, but God says, I want you blessed so that you can bless others. Oh, I'm teaching right teaching right. So, so this is this is important. So when you have a good, strong culture of honor, you have a culture that has solid relationships. And we talked about it last week. Mature believers and mature people and mentally healthy and stable people understand that I don't need to be able to relate to everybody the exact same way. You know, we have this thing where we want to try to hold everybody accountable and make everybody treat everybody just like you can't do that. That doesn't even make sense. I have three children and I don't treat them the same. I treat them based on who they are and based on what God has put in them. And I deal and I deal with them from that perspective. There were things that I knew I could say to, to, to Devon that I could not say to Emmanuel because of even their personality, their temperament, and etc. There are things that I could say and do with Kayla that I couldn't do with my sons. And so it's the same in life. And whenever you're in a place where you want everybody to treat you and everybody to be treated the exact same, you are not only misled, but you're unhealthy in your understanding and concept of relationships. Yeah. Oh, come on, clap your hands on that one. Clap your hands on that Don't worry about that because what everybody deserves is to be respected. Everybody deserves to be valued. But everybody is not in a place where we can treat each other the exact same, even as it relates to how we socialize. But when you have a culture of honor, you understand these things and you have solid relationships. And now jealousy cannot seep in because you see two sisters hanging tight, but you you want to hang tight with somebody, but you want to get in there and you, I, I, I want to, but, but it's not the season for you to be in that relationship and it may not even be the season for you or it may not even be the relationship for you and so you don't allow jealousy to get in your heart when you are walking in honor you respect that man they have a great relationship and you don't become envious or jealous of others relationships and allow rejection to grab your heart and make you feel like you've been left out you just realize that listen they have a great relationship but get this somebody that God has placed in your life is that same person for you as they are to them to each other and you got to connect with the right people so you can build solid relationships and stop being childish and acting like somebody owe you something because you just belong to the same church. Everybody that go to the same church ain't going to have the same fellowship.
my children grew up in the same house. But they didn't necessarily, like my son didn't hang with my daughter. And my, my youngest, Emmanuel, he's just an extreme introvert, so he didn't hang with nobody. He didn't want everybody to leave me alone. He wanted to know, why do I got to come out and eat with y'all? But having this understanding, and here's another thing, when you have a culture of honor and you're building strong relationships, because that's what the culture of honor does, it, it, it allows you to solidify strong relationships. But when you are honorable, you can do that, and you will have the ability to not only, again, comprehend, uh, if you will, the dynamics of relationships, but you will be able to even receive and, and respect things that may not directly relate to you, and you won't take it the wrong way way. Amen. That makes sense? Amen. Oh, I'm teaching good. Let's read the scripture. Let me give you some Bible, and that way we bring this into context. Look at Philippians chapter 2. This is good stuff. And my philosophy, again, on life is, listen, I don't care how pretty your house or big your house, how beautiful your car, I don't care how beautiful the church may be. Listen, the, the most important thing uh, as it relates to the things and the places that we basically share time and space with others with literally is the quality of those relationships. You see nice, pretty houses and people in there can't stand each other. If we can't get along, the house ain't, listen, hello, I'd rather live in a shack with somebody that I can get along with than a mansion with somebody that I'm trying to kill in there. My point is, your relationships determine the quality of your life. Your life, it is hell having to go somewhere where you can't stand the people you around. It is, it is, a, it is a agonizing to, to wake up or to go home and you know you're going to do nothing but fight and quarrel and strife. And, you know, it's, it's hell having to ride an hour to work with somebody that you basically can't stand. The, the time and the space that we share with people is so important. That's why you've got to value and respect your time and you've got to make sure people understand you respect your time and your space. And I'm not going to hang around with folks that I cannot get along with. Come on. If we can't get along, we're going to get on. Hello. Let me tell you, some of you going to get anointed to say bye. Yes, I, I, I felt that. I felt that. Listen, some of you guys are going to anoint you and say goodbye. You ain't going to do it with no attitude. You're going to thank them. Thank you for everything you've done. I appreciate everything. But girl, bye. Boy, bye. I'm out. Peace. I'm gone. That's what I'm seeking. I'm seeking peace. I am not going to continue to hang out, live with, work with, and do business with folk that I cannot deal with. I'm so glad I own my own business because I can choose who I want to work with. Yes, even as a realtor, we get fired too. I had somebody say, I, and I was so thankful. I said, God, they fired me before I fired them. I was trying to figure out, Brother Patrick, how to get out of this contract. See, we deal with contracts and agreements. It's like, man, and you know, I'm honored, so I'm honored this contract. But I said, I, man, I, every time I went out to do business, it was like an act of oh, God. Father, help me. Jesus, be with me. You know when you got to pray to go to work? You know how it is? You, all the way to work, you've been in intercession. You know what I'm about? God, help me. It's time to find a new job. I don't need revival every morning to go to work. I need to be able to say, I need to do this in peace. Now, don't misunderstand me because when you, when you mature and when you're striving for great achievements, you're going to realize that don't mean I have to have everybody that I like around me or that likes me. Because sometimes what holds us back is that we basically don't know how to work with people who can help us get to where we need to go because we want a bunch of yes people and a bunch of kisses around us. Sometimes you got to have somebody who may rub you a little wrong, but they're going to get that thing done. They're going to get the job done. And I can't be around for 10 minutes, but I'll make sure you got this job done. So literally, relationships are power. Relationships are everything. Relationship is everything. I'm telling you, the quality of your, of your life is based on the relationships you own and you have. But I believe those who are honorable people learn how and understand that even the culture of honor helps to build strong relationships. Look at Philippians 2 and 1 says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, 
if any fellowship of the spirit. I love that fellowship of the spirit. And there's a difference in fellowship of the spirit. And that's a capital S spirit, which denotes the Holy Spirit here in this particular verse. Now, stay with me on this because I want to I want to mention this again, because this is the problem. We like the fellowship based on our own, if you will, merit. This is how I think fellowship should be. No, fellowship of the spirit, again, is, get this, because you have this thing where people said, go where you're celebrated. Not necessarily, go where God takes you. I've just been stuck that popular saying, I'm sorry. People tell you, go where you're celebrated. No, you go where God sends you. That's what it means, fellowship of the spirit. God, listen, can I tell you something? God will send you into a place that will disturb the part of you that needs to be delivered. God knows you don't have no patience, so he'll send you around a bunch of people who get on your nerves because I want to teach you how to be patient. Y'all understand? I know it's easy to feel saved by yourself. It's easy to feel like you delivered when you, you set everything up just the way you like it. Everybody like you, everybody owe you money, so you feel it. Everybody around you, you got some form of control. God will send you around people who don't need you. He'll send you around people who has more talent than you. He'll put you around folk, basically, who will be, I'm talking about, they, they, they will be able literally to, to, to work circles around you. You'll have to humble your proud self. And, and, and he'll put you around folk who will rub you and, and show you the fruit that you need the most help with. Has anybody ever experienced that? And this is why this is why people sometimes struggle with relationships. This is why people basically find themselves very, very volatile in many ways because we're, we're always trying to run from something to get to a comfortable place when God says I put you in an uncomfortable place to develop you. And when something is not what we like and if it's not something that is comfortable for us, we'll make an adjustment. I don't like this church, so I'm going to go find one. Like that. No, God will, God will send you where he wants you. He'll send you where he wants He'll put you on a job he wants you to have. He'll give you the supervisor, that glory to God. I'm talking about that will develop your character and will develop you. I'm talking about that supervisor that literally will stay on you and, and God will teach you how to humble yourself. Oh, God. It's always somebody. I don't care. And get this now. I know you can relate to this. And there's always somebody at work, at church, and at home. There's always somebody that has that button. And if you have more than one child, one of them, one of them knows how to push that button to see just how much patience you really have. When my, when my son was little, he, you know, man, he used to, he would say something like, he'd just have a glass, I want to drop and break this glass. And I ain't going to tell you what I would say, it, it rhymed with glass though. So you try to break that glass, I'm gonna break that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he would just he, he just wanted he wanted to see if we were gonna do anything. I was like, and I used I used to do this because you know we, we're prophetic people too. And I used to prophesy. I said, I, I, I prophesy. I see you crying in a few minutes too. <laughs> I see you crying in a few minutes. I see you in a few minutes all upset. Your day is all messed up. Ooh, yeah, shot, shot. <laughs> That's what you do. Prophesy to them, baby. Let them know. I see the future, baby. I see you sitting sideways for a couple of hours. So fellowship of the Spirit means to fellowship the way God intends and designs and desires fellowship. And to be honest with you, let's, let's be honest, it takes the Holy Spirit for us to deal with each other. Because our nature is selfish within itself. We're selfish people by nature. So it takes the Holy Spirit 
to, 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 to condition and deliver us, to bring us into a place where we are now walking by the Spirit. And he goes on and says, if there are any bowels and mercies. Let me read that again in its entirety. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercy, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded. Now, honor is a mentality before it's a reality. Because if you don't have the right mentality and mindset towards a people, place, or thing that you're supposed to be honoring, you will never be able to exhibit honor in your actions or your words when your attitude is not there. In other words, you're going to treat people based on how you think about them. And people sometimes fake it, but this is those people who, you know, that, that fake it. They act like they love you and like you and they act like they honor you. This is why it's not consistent. And this is why sometimes you can, you can feel their attitude when they say, girl, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> their lips don't even move right when they say, girl, I love you. <laughs> lips get stiff when they say, girl, it ain't natural. <laughs> I love you. And watch people who got to tell you that all the time. Why do you got to tell me you love me every time you see me? I just saw you. I loved you a minute ago. I love you now. Come on, and don't have to tell me. Listen, just love me. Don't. Now, don't misunderstand me. That sometimes is an internal thing. Sometimes people basically are affectionate, and then sometimes people are, are wounded, and, and they want to be loved, so they want to make sure that you know I love them, so you give it back to them. But, you know, sometimes that can just simply be overbearing and sometimes it's just too much, right? And that's a balance of things. And that doesn't mean everybody that says that, you know, because I tell my wife that regularly, right? I tell my children that regularly. I'm one of those, I'm an affectionate type person to where I, I express my love for them and I also express it in words, but I back it up in my actions. Okay? But can I tell you, you will not outlive or out act or you will not act any other way other than your attitude. You might show honor every now and then but your attitude is going to show up. It's an attitude before it's a reality. Okay? And so he says, fulfill you my joy that you be like-minded. All of us need to develop and cultivate the mentality of honor and the right thinking towards one another. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. It reads this way in the Amplified, that particular verse. It says, do nothing uh, from, uh, no, that's what it says in the third verse here. It says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. That's the third verse. Let's read it in the Amplified. Do nothing from factional motives, through contentiousness, strife, selfishness. One of the things that really causes people not to be honorable or to walk in honor is selfishness. Man, and selfish people are hard to deal with. Selfish people, you can't please them. I don't care what you do. You can give them $200 in ones. They'll complain because you gave me all the ones. Why didn't you give me tens? You can bless them. You can do all. And, and they're selfish. Selfish. Everything is about them. Everything is about how they want it, how they feel, how they think. And you cannot. Listen, I'm telling you, and I make sure that everybody that I know and everybody that I've dealt with is selfish. I let them know you're selfish and I'm not trying to please you. Hello? When my children struggle with it, I tell them it's selfish. And I don't, try, I don't try to please selfish people because you end up working yourself to death. In other words, I can't do nothing to satisfy you, so I ain't doing nothing at all. That's why I should tell my kids, if I can't satisfy, I ain't going to try. Because you're not grateful. Selfish people are ungrateful people. And they don't know how to walk in honor. They don't know how to extend honor. And this is an attitude. Look at what he says here. He says, don't do things. Don't let your motives, don't let, let, don't let your motives be fake and factional uh, through contentiousness, strife, selfishness, or for unworthy ends, or prompted by conceit and empty arrogance. Instead, in the true spirit of humility, lowliness of mind, let each regard the others as better than themselves. Look over at somebody and say, you better than me. Better than me. That's how I see you. 
And when you walk in in honor, and it's a culture of honor, every time you see someone, that's how you should see them. You should see somebody who is just as and more valuable than you are. It's, it's as if when you are walking in the culture of honor, or when we create a culture of honor, everybody, every single one of us, no matter who you encounter, we make each other feel valuable. Oh, I'm preaching good. Now, that, that doesn't mean we don't have issues and we don't, you know, correct and rebuke and, 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 and say what we need to say in the proper context of what needs to be said. But it de definitely means that I'm not going to disrespect you. I'm not going to disregard you. And one of the first signs of disregard is you walking by me and you didn't even speak. Come on, somebody. Come on. When do we and how do we get so anointed that you can't say, hey, have you ever seen these deep folk? My God. They come out of prayer.
You ain't got to have no license to be a daughter. You ain't got to have no license to cast out no devil. Oh, come on, somebody. Some of y'all been dealing with stuff too long because you're waiting on somebody to come in and deal with it because they got an anointed. And they don't even, you don't even realize you are anointed to deal with it. Deal with that stuff that's in your life. Deal with that stuff that's in your home. Deal with that stuff that's in your lazy spirit and understand see some folks don't want to be anointed because it's going to take some work see when you anointed you don't have to go to prayer oh see if you got an anointing you can't tell me you anointed and you don't pray you can't maintain an anointing outside of prayer and what we got confused in this generation we, we have we made intelligence anointed no, people are smart, but they don't necessarily mean they're normal. We got a lot of intelligent people. And everybody's, I mean, everybody's smart. And, and, and this is an information generation. We're in a generation now with the internet and with everything, with Uncle Google. And you, you, you can sound brilliant right from your phone. Learn how to, to take public speaking classes. You have information at your fingertips. Folks, people don't even have to study much anymore. Why? Because they get up and Google. Come on. But see, the anointing comes when you labor before God. Get shut up. Woo! May not be the smartest, but I know God and I know how to get in his presence. I might not be able to come out with the big words. I may not be able to speak theologically and all the homiletics and hermeneutics and all of that stuff. But can I tell you, I do know God.
You go to the doctor, the doctor want to know about your mama, what your mama did, what your daddy had, did your brother have it, did your sister have it too? Uh, when was the last time you had this? When was the last time you had you ever had, did you ever, have you ever had herpes? Have you ever had this disease? I mean, they ask you everything. And you come to church, ask somebody two questions. And you can't get delivered unless somebody get in your business. You want to say, God, get all up in my business. Get all up in my business. Get my Same mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, he says. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others. We're to esteem one another. When you're in a culture of honor, we literally value one another. We don't just value the pastor. We don't just value uh, those that are leaders and the elders and the prophets. We value people. One of our values, we value relationships and people. You ought to make sure everybody knows that you see them. And you don't have to, again, be overbearing, but at least if you're going in that direction, you speak to people. Good morning, sis. Make it your business to get to know somebody besides the same three people. Say this month, I'm going to find out. You know, that sister who sits on that row over there, you know what? She's a sweet sister. I'm, I'm going to learn her name. How do we have strong fellowship? We don't even know, we don't even know each other's name. We don't even know each other's stay. Hello. The Bible says that the scripture even says that, you know, uh, they came to Jesus and Jesus said, listen, I was, I was hungry. You didn't feed me. I need someone to say you didn't give me notice. Now, we're supposed to be hospitable. Loving. Scripture says in Acts that they had all things common. Man, today we're so into ourselves. We're into our forward no more. And I get it. I get it. You know, because I'm one. I can live on an island literally by myself. I am so at peace when I'm just like, yes. And sometimes you get nervous when you see somebody coming in and like. And so you have to learn how. I'm being honest, you have to learn how. And I've learned over the years as a leader and as, 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 a, as, as, a, as a pastor, I had to learn how to open my life up, right? And so literally, we got we to gotta learn uh, to be more hospitable and learn to be, I'm talking about intentional. Yeah. Get to know one another, get to love on each other. And, and one reason why this is challenging because when you when you talk about fellowshiping like this, you know, it, it, it's work. Because we so busy, it's like I ain't got enough time for my own plate. More or less dealing with somebody. Because once you start getting in fellowship, folk will want stuff, folk will call you and talk. And if you know me, y'all know me, I don't do phones. Hello. You do better set an appointment. Because I'm trying to figure out, why are you calling me? Huh? I can't do that phone for about 30 seconds. Make it quick. You ever seen phone that's going on? Only phone is, you be like, okay, what's up? What you doing? I know you didn't call me asking what I'm doing. What you want? My son calls me every day. My oldest son, he calls me every day. Pop, what you doing? Nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm chilling. Something. I was just checking on you and I appreciate that. That makes me feel valuable. Now, my point to that is let's be intentional. Get to know one another. But see, even in my own little ways, I got to come out of those ways to be Christ-like. Hello? Now get this. Your physical body works together, right? So we are the body of Christ. We should work together. We should work together. If you work in the same company or in the same job, you, your sister shouldn't have to eat lunch by herself and you go to the same church. We ought to even teach our children that at school. If you go to school with some of the kids that's in our church, make sure you ain't got to hang with them and, 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 you know, come outside of your own, if you will, world to be with, but at least acknowledge yourself. Oh, I'm preaching good. At least acknowledge that we are one. We are together. I shouldn't see Robert in the grocery store and act like I'm seeing a stranger. Speak to the man. Hell, come on. Have you ever been seen them both? He's like, I know they know me. And, and you know they know me. It's like, I know they know me. And you're just making your business. I'm, 
Because see, I'm, my wife can tell you, I'm one of those. I, I, I'm one of the ones that go right up to you. Hey. And then he says, look not every man. This is what honor does. Honor will cause you to look at the needs of others. He said, look not every man on his own things. But, look at this. Every man also on the things of others. Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, what I love about Jesus, as it goes on to say, who being in the form of God, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but look at what he made himself of no reputation. What we got to learn to do is we got to learn to carry ourselves and walk in the spirit and stop walking in the context of trying to develop a reputation and just learn how to walk in the spirit. It doesn't matter about the reputation because people will flip on you just like they did Jesus. Come on here. You can heal them. You can bring all types of miracles to them. And then as soon as they get up there and, and they'll still ask for Barabbas. Come on somebody. They, they, they'll get up there and ask for Barabbas instead of you. Come on. Have you ever had people that you helped uh, and you helped them and you they wore out your couch, they slept out your couch, they ate your food, they ate your collard greens, uh, they come in and they ravished your refrigerator and then they got on their feet and didn't act like they knew you one iota, wouldn't even send you back a dollar for all the food they ate, did not replenish your couch, did not help you pay a bill, and then turn around and act like you never done anything for them. Do not try to please people because when you try to please people and build a reputation, you're going to get your feelings hurt. Even Jesus understood that I'm dying for these folks and they still don't have the decency to say give me Jesus. They ask for Barabbas and then they one day talk about he's the king of the Jews and then the next day say crucify. And I know it was purpose, but that's why you got to understand that you cannot work for a reputation Who 
who's out there, maybe somebody out there important. And you know, every time you do what you do, I don't care if you preach before a thousand people or if you preach before two people, you ought to do it to the glory of God. You ought to do what you do as unto the Lord. If God tells you to go and, and speak to somebody on the street, you ought to go do it as if this is the thing that God told me to do, and I'm going to do it with honor, and I'm going to do it with dignity, and I'm going to do it with I'm not going to do anything for God halfway. Let me get out of this. And so he says, here, yeah, I love this about, the scripture says, but he made himself of no reputation and took upon him, look at this, the form of a servant. Woo! He took the form of a servant. This is Jesus. This is the anointing who took the form of a servant. And the Bible says, and was made in the likeness of men. And that's what we got to do. We got to take the form of a servant. And what I mean by that is we got to begin to serve one another, honor one another. We got to begin to care for one another. I'm telling you, I said it last week. I believe that, that, that ministries today, I think the churches today that will experience any type of glory and the presence of God and the glory of God will be churches that learn how to operate in the extreme love of God, in the extreme love of God. When I say extreme love, love is not always mushy, mushy, and negative. Sometimes love is corrected. The Bible says if, if he loves you, he's going to chase you. He'll correct you. Uh, love is important, but it's how we treat one another. It's how we treat. How do people make you feel? How do you feel in the presence of people? And when you love people, you have the ability. This is what honor does. Honor creates a, a culture. Honor creates, if you will, relationships where you can deal with hard issues. I talked about it last week. My wife and I, we love and we honor one another so, but we talk to each other in, in a way where she can say anything to me. She can talk to me about hard stuff. She can say stuff to me that she don't like. She don't have to worry about if she's angry. How is he going to take my anger? She, she sometimes can say things to me that, yes, hurt my feelings. And, and sometimes it's like, man, you could have softened that up a little bit and you didn't have to say it like that. That. But literally we have a relationship where we can talk and communicate without fear. Without fear of rejection and retaliation and all this, that, and the other. And that's what the culture of honor does. It gives us the ability to build relationships so that if you have an awe against your brother, you can go to him and you ain't got to worry about, you know, now we've fallen all out. No, 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 no. Robert ought to be able to come to me and say, Apostle, I was offended at this. And I should listen. I should listen. Why? Because I honor him. I respect him. And, and you don't, listen, you're not honoring your brother, your sister, if the first thing you do is defend yourself. Listen to him. Hear him out. You may not agree with him. Just hear him out. That makes you feel valued. And one of the things that devalue people and makes people feel devalued is when you take away their right to speak. Nothing is worse than not having a voice. Have you ever been in a relationship where you had no voice? Even if you said something, you knew it didn't go anywhere. It... Nothing is more disrespectful is to be in a relationship of any kind and you have no say. You have no voice. And one of the most powerful things you can do is empower people with a voice. Give them a voice. That's why they tell you, to put your vote, cast your vote when they vote and then vote and vote. Just make your voice heard. That's why they tell you now, even as people are protesting, because it's powerful when you can speak up and you can speak out and you can share your heart and not fear that the relationship now is in jeopardy because I express myself. Whew. And when you have a culture of honor, people can talk to one another and you can have hard conversations. Yeah. You, you have an audience against your brother. You can go to your brother, your sister, and you ain't worried about if this is going to be this fallout. We're going to have this thing now where, oh, God, you know, now I'm Because, you know, there's some folks, you, you, you come up against one, you got to come up against that whole clan. You know, some yeah. people got a lot of friends, right? And so, you know, and, and you got to learn. I've learned this. I, I learned that Robert may have friends that I don't care too much for, but that don't mean Robert is... You know, I got to watch Robin. I know. I, I, I said it. Whenever you sit and do lunch, you ought to make sure you just talk about each other. Mm -hmm. Like when I go and talk and do a lunch, I, listen, it's between whoever I'm sitting and talking with. I ain't going to go to lunch with, with Robin. We're going to talk about Corey. Mm -hmm. Corey ain't here. We want to talk about Corey. We should have invited Corey. Yeah. See, so, so, so it, it helps you to build relationships. 
that's solid when you have a culture bond. You know, I'm, I'm closing with this. I used to coach basketball and at Goldsboro High School, you know, when, we was coach, when I was coaching, helping them coach, I was like, man, you can tell when teammates didn't get along and didn't have good relationships. You know, we was in the middle of a game, middle of a game, and our players, same team, coming off the floor, about ready to throw blows, fist fight. I had to jump between them. It's like, God, y'all make, make it yourself. Everybody does, everybody look bad. Y'all, that mean, they literally finna fight each other. And they was trying to tell me one of I said, no, nah, that ain't the problem. The problem is, y'all don't even know each other. I said, it ain't got nothing to do with what was on that floor. It has everything to do with what is going on when you get off this floor. I said, if you're going to be a team, you need to have relationship beyond just this court. Here's why. Because when you don't have relationship, you can't correct one another. And what happened was, one player corrected the other. The other got mad. But he can't tell. I said, like, that, that's your teammate. That's your brother. He should be able to say something to you without you ready to throw blows. You ought to be able to go to your sister or your brother without y'all falling all out. Because y'all are family. Hello, family. Family. And when you don't have good relationships, you can't say anything. One of the signs of bad relationships or, or, or lack of relationship or no relationship at all is you can't communicate, especially if it's something that is corrective or something that might be offensive. And everything offensive is not always bad. Because <laughs> sometimes the greatest deliverance is coming from that word that offended you. And the only thing that's really getting offended is your flesh. Yeah. Your spirit is saying, thank you. Somebody finally told you. Yeah. I'll say this again. You need at least two people in your life who will tell you exactly what you need to hear. At least two. You need to keep them close. Every night need, you need, that's when you need to take the lunch. And they need to tell you your slip show. Figuratively speaking. Meaning you're talking too much. That ain't right. You need to stop. You're wrong. That's sin. You need to stop that, you end up in hell. You need to stop that, you go to jail. Then you, you, need, you need these people in your life. You need these people on, you need these people on your team. You need people on your team who don't stuff. They tell you straight, they don't blink. And then they say, I love you, boo. After they tell you, I love you. You might say, it don't feel like it. It ain't how it feels, it's what's real. Isn't that right? And so when we build this culture of honor, we are able to solidify strong relationships. And lastly, relationships, again, you know, are, are the key to life. It's the key also to, to success in anything. You, you will not succeed at anything by yourself. you got to be strong relational people. And one of the things that we learn in the culture of honor, it is a culture of respect. Okay? It's a culture of respect. It's a culture of respect. These are the five things in this culture that you will see. You will also have that respect, that high regard. The second thing you will have is shared experiences. When you have a culture of honor, you will have shared experiences. That's what I mean by fellowship, getting to know one another. It solidifies, it's strong, it, it strengthens the fellowship of the church. It strengthens the body of Christ. And we also got to learn that fellowship is not about church to church. Fellowship is about the body of Christ. I don't care what church people go to. If they're born again and they believe us, you know, hey, listen, we may have different vision, different churches, but that's still my brother and my sister. I, listen, I, I, I know this by virtue of the fact that there's a real thing called black and white in America, right? And I, I will say that in the western part of the world, literally, um, you know, you find that, yeah, there's, there's a lot of racist, a lot of things that's just simply not right. I don't even believe in black and white church. No. The body of Christ. Hello? Y'all don't stone me. Body of Christ. Yeah, and I know there are issues, but with the body of Christ. Shared experiences. The third thing that you find in the culture of honor is trust. As we build this culture, as we continue to build it, it's trust. And then the fourth thing, you have strong reciprocity. 
you have strong reciprocity. It's, it's, it's like we give and take, we, we share, we, you know, you reap what you sow, you, you'll give it back. It'll come back to you. You honor, it'll come back to you. Reciprocity, it's not one-sided. And the last thing, which is so important in a culture of honor, as, as well as one of the most important things in relationship, there's mutual enjoyment. Oh God, there's mutual enjoyment. When you're in a culture of honor and you have strong relationships, everybody enjoys it. You enjoy it. And I'll be honest with you, one of the things that really makes anything difficult to stay a part of or to stay in is when enjoyment is gone. Yes. Whenever you stop enjoying yourself in anything, it becomes like labor. It's like, God, I gotta work to go to work. You don't enjoy working anymore, no it's hard going. When you don't enjoy church no more, it's hard going. When you don't enjoy relationships that you have, you know, even in marriage, one of the things that we do, you know, I, I told my wife, I said, you know what, we, you know, we, 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 we teach, train people to work. I said, we teach and train people to build. I said, but you find out and you see and you notice as we do coaching and marital coaching, people ain't enjoying each other. Like, yeah, you're building a 401k, you're building this, but y'all don't like each other. Well, are you, you know, I've never seen couples stuttering when you ask them, what do y'all do for enjoyment? That's all they need to look like. What's that? Go to work? <laughs> okay. But when you have mutual enjoyment, man, it solidifies everything. It just makes it all better. Isn't that good? Yeah. Come on, clap your hands for a culture of honor, man. That was a lot today. Man, that was a lot. But that's good stuff, though. What a good job. And, and this is what has to, he has to work on us. And we have to become honorable people to develop that type of culture. But again, it's, it's something that we have to also be intentional and we have to basically uh, make certain that we hold each other accountable. Accountable. Honor one another. Honor one another. And it's not always about what we can give to each other in the context of a gift, et cetera. But sometimes it's about how we make each other feel. How we put our arms around each other in difficult times. How we pray for one another. See your brother and sister down. You help build them up. You encourage them. Because we're family. We're part of the body of Christ. And we're part of this house even. But a culture of honor is powerful. You see miracles and you see signs and wonders can take place in these types of cultures. These types of cultures. Come on, just worship him for a moment. I'm going to pray for you today. That was a lot that we talked, a lot that we shared, we, we went over. I believe God is doing something special. Even as he's helping us develop a culture of honor, a culture of love, a culture of giving. I mean, culture incorporates so many things. We're a culture of honor, we're a culture of giving, we're a culture of love. We're a culture that practices forgiveness. We practice forgiveness and literally I promise you you work on these things your relationships will be so healthy even if they're not always things that you agree on things that yeah, you're going to have issues but your relationships will be healthy my wife and I we've been married this year 31 years 31 years <laughs> And the quality of our marriage has been for 31 years. Not 10 has been quality. No, 31. Very intentional. But we've had hard times. We've had difficult times. We've had challenges. Man, I know there were days when she wanted to put me out of that house. But when you have love and honor and respect like that, Tell you, nothing is more enjoyable than to be in a place where you, again, you just can't wait to get into fellowship with the people you love. 31 years I've been married to this woman. Always love going home this year. Always love being around her. Always, you know, we'd be struggling to take sabbatical because like, we can't take sabbatical by ourselves. You know, people take sabbatical, like you go all by yourself. It's like, uh, can you go with me? Now I use she and I as an example. But this is how we build also all of our relationships. We should have this respect, regard, desire, 
uh, to really make certain that we know that we're all valued in the space that we share. I study ecology a lot. Ecology, ecology is uh, the shared space and time with all living things or living people, in this case, people. It's just basically a study of the space and time that we share with people. And that's important for me. Everywhere I go, my space has got to be good. I won't stay when people disrespect me. If you don't regard me, you ain't got to worry about I'm out. See, because I only share time and space with people who understand who I am. I know who I am. And again, I bring my own price tag. I don't need you to put no value on me. I know who I am. Just don't take any away from me. Don't take any away from me. I'm not going to take any from you because I'm going to esteem you more highly. But I say that. Make certain that you are that type of person that walk in a, I'm talking about a spirit of honor. That everywhere you go, people would love to have you around. They'd love to have you around. Come on, we're going to pray for you. You can remain seated. I'm going to let you be comfortable. They see how good I've been to you today. You can stay seated. Y'all look so comfortable. Father, we thank you today for everything said and done. I thank you for a culture of honor. I thank you for a people of honor. I thank you for continuing to teach us and to cultivate in us your love. We can only do this through the Holy Spirit. It's only through the Holy Spirit that we can operate in such high level of love and regard. You even said in your word, who art man? The psalmist penned it. Who art man that thou art mindful of him? You valued us and you love us so that even, Father, when we were in our sins, you sent your son Jesus and he died for us. You showed us that you loved us by the sacrifice you made on the cross of Calvary. And I thank you for that. You honored us. You regarded us. You valued us. God, and I thank you. Even now, I thank you for the spirit of honor being placed upon every believer that's under the sound of my voice. I decree and declare even today that, God, you're going to continue to give a strong understanding and conviction to honor you, to honor authority, and to honor one another even more highly than we do our own selves. And I thank you today, even today, I thank you for the word of God that has even been preached. Allow that word to germinate in our heart, Father, and allow it to take root in our spirit and let it bring forth fruit that shall remain for your glory and your honor. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every person who is in any relationship that is causing them pain, strife, anything that is not proper in our relationships. I decree and declare that you give us wisdom. Give us wisdom, Father. Give us wisdom to have marriages that are honorable. Give us wisdom to have honorable friendships. Give us wisdom to have honorable business connections. And Father, I thank you that where honor is, your glory is there also. And I thank you that we even now, even now, receive the glory of God, even upon our relationships. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And if you can receive this, come on, somebody give it praise. Come on, give it praise. Come on, give it praise. Give it praise. I am a Give it praise. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Sing my sins. You guys have been amazing. Amazing. You have been amazing. Listen, thank you for those of you who tuned in through Facebook Live. We appreciate you. And to those of you who are here, we're going to ask even now if you desire to give and to sow. We ask that you would just be a blessing. We're going to ask that Brother Mike would just go by and receive your tithe, your offering. We thank you that we are a culture of giving, of givers as well. We give, we sow, we seed. And I believe that even as you give, God will honor. God will honor your seed. The Bible says that we honor the Lord with our substance, the first fruit in our substance. And so even those of you who are on Facebook, if you would go to our website, you can go and you can uh, find out how you can give online. You can text to give. We thank you for your liberal giving. We thank you for how you've been so supportive. We thank you for how you've been patient even as we have been in and we're still under renovations next door. Some amazing things that we're doing next door. You guys are going to enjoy how we've just basically gone and then just got everything painted and everything. It's just, this is going to be so nice when we go back over. Hopefully this is the last Sunday that we'll be in this particular building and we'll be back hopefully next week in our, our main sanctuary next door but we do thank God for the ability to continue to just be consistent with our services 
and in the midst of the renovations, it took a little longer than what we anticipated, but we do appreciate you and your patience and your commitment to yet still come in fellowship and thank God that we have facilities where we can facilitate worship even in the middle of renovations. So thank God for that. We do want to encourage you to continue to support all of our visions. We thank God, Pastor Linda, Elder Linda is here. She works the day center, her and her amazing team. Sister Reba, Sister Reba, Brother Darren, they are so thankful. Right here in 401, I'm telling you, if you ever have time on Wednesdays and Fridays, stop by and see them, make donations, take things out there, see Linda, see what it is that they need. Uh, they are truly a blessing. I, again, as I come throughout the community, the people basically uh, constantly talk about those nice folk down here. I know they talk about Regal. I know they talk about Regal. And Darren. Darren's nice too. Uh, but we thank God for you guys. And so continue to support them. We also want you to know that we are endeavoring to continue to move forward. We have facilities also downtown. 22,000 square feet of building. A lot of building. And we are definitely in the middle. Um, some very, very major, major projects. And so we're asking you to continue to be a faithful giver. Uh, we will be soliciting for those of you who will support and give. Um, we, we can do this so many different ways, but I believe in God that God's going to touch the hearts. The Bible says that the Spirit of God stirred the hearts of the people of Israel and they gave. And they gave so much so that Moses even had to tell them that we have more than enough. Stop giving. But I believe that God is getting ready to do some amazing things here at Impact. And so... We're going to be soliciting, we're going to be uh, asking you to support and to help us, amen, with some of these amazing projects. We basically had started gutting that building out. Uh, we started that last year, actually, but literally, we're going to be uh, going in and we're going to start making some moves to really renovate and uh, outfit and just sort of take that to a whole different level. And so we're planning on owning this whole corner. Uh, we're just going to buy everything. God tell us to So I need all of you. I got rich members. I need about four or five rich members. If all of us, those of us rich members, I can get about five of you right now to give me $20,000. I write my $20,000 check. You write yours. Five of us, and we can start work next week if you want to. You just let me know. Uh, and, and whoever gives that five, that $20,000, I promise you, you, you and I, we are going to lunch. Hey, we might. We're going to lunch. We're going to get some lamb chops from somewhere. I'm paying too. I'm paying. You write 20000 and you're going to sit on the front row. And I'm going to buy you a pair of shoes. Uh, we love you guys. But we're going to be talking more about that. But I do want you to know that we are excited about the things that God is doing. And uh, we're just looking forward to it. Our entire assignment is to facilitate solutions and to bring solutions to our community. I'm excited about what God is saying and what God is doing. We're going to move into some things that's going to bless your life. God spoke to me and said, I want you to concentrate on three E's. Education, economics, and entrepreneurship. Yeah. Yeah. Now, three E's. God does not just want us to come and shout and feel good and go back through next week the same way that last week. God is the God who can change your life and your lifestyle. He didn't just come to save you, but he came to give you everything that you have now as a son of God inherited. And he's a God that can save. He's a God that can prosper. So we're going that direction. So nothing else. Thank you for being with us. We love you. God bless you as I pray. Please, for those of you who are in the sanctuary, remember that we are actually still social distancing ourselves. So please be mindful of that. I know some have gotten vaccinated. That is fine. And we're certainly grateful for that. Uh, praying prayerfully that everybody will get vaccinated. Who feels led? But still remain, if you will, conscious of the fact that we are in the middle of yet and still a time where it's just better to be safe than sorry. So please social distance yourself. Continue to uh, conduct yourself uh, in that manner. Uh, we do want to welcome all of you next week or Saturday. This coming up week, actually, Friday and Saturday, we will actually be in our, our workshop. We will basically be dealing with uh, all of those who will be serving and working and all of those who are ministering in any capacity and those who desire to minister in any capacity here at Impact. We will be doing a two-day workshop Friday night and Saturday morning. We will literally be doing uh, our workers' workshop. Uh, 
ministerial workshop. It's everything incorporated in that workshop. So we're going to have some amazing things going on. And so please, please, please register so we'll know who's coming. We just want to be able to prepare ourselves. And so... Thank you for that. Also, members appreciation. That's also next week. That's next Sunday. Uh, yours truly, Pastor Robert, and yours truly will be uh, grilling for you guys. Uh, we're going to be cooking out. And we're going to appreciate you guys and, and take the time to honor you uh, next Sunday. Is that correct? Next Sunday. So it'll be at Minnie World Park at 1 o'clock. Uh, so please register so we'll know how many people are coming. Big Park? 12 o'clock. Okay? All right. I just work here. I, I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, we want to take the time to show you our appreciation as well. And so uh, we the leaders, we're going to take that time to serve you guys. And uh, as we try to do uh, every year, we can go out and just have a good time and, and just really believe God is going to just give us great weather. And uh, we just have great fun. So please register and please come and just allow us to just show you guys how much we appreciate you and serve you a hot dog, piece of chicken. Some tea and lemonade, all of that stuff, and just love on you. Is that all right? And all are welcome. God bless you as I pray.